real meaning of our life. Okay, uh, the last time I introduced myself as Gemini Sagittarius, I won't use that little gimmick again. I don't like to be repetitious, though I have been. The uh, entitlement of this particular first class is what we're going to do here, uh, rather than introduce astrology. Uh, if you want to get introduced to it, then uh, the book I'm recommending, let me hold it up so it'll get on camera here, uh, is a book that simplifies the approach to astrology. The only book you'll ever need uh, is, is, is never true. There's, never, there's no one book for anything, including the Bible and the Quran. That's, this is advertisement. You know. But it covers A to Z in basics, and that's where everybody should start. Because you need to know how you put a chart together before it makes sense. If someone can do it, do your chart and put a piece of paper in front of it, and it literally turns out to be Greek, you know, it, literally, you know, in terms of symbology. So uh, th this is not a quick fix to knowing everything. And in fact, be, be very much conscious of the level of knowledge that you study when you study spiritual knowledge is a high food for the spiritual body, but it becomes a drug for the ego. The ego gets high on this. And if you don't think so, wait until you finish reading one book and see what your attitude is when you walk out among your buddies, you know. They don't know this. They don't, you know. You start to strut. I mean, okay, I'm, I'm letting you know ahead of time. So, because as soon as you get your attitude too far out, your higher self is going to chop you down. So if you want to avoid a butt kicking, keep your self balanced. And the more you study, realize it, the less you know. Not the more you know, the, the, the more there is to be known. So uh, Joanne uh, Martine Woolfolk uh, is the author of this well-explained, clearly focused piece of literature on astrology. Astrologos is a concept that comes out of the Latin, which means the logic or the reasoning of the stars. We are studying the metaphysical science. We're not studying the science of. The astronomer studies the science of planets, constellations. He's interested in the relationship of planets about their view, view in the heavens. That's this planet is here, and that planet is there, and this planet is called this, and that's mundane perspective. That will tell you absolutely nothing about who you are, who God is, and what the nature of the universe is. We are looking at astrology as a clock because we're most familiar with the clock. And this clock does not come from the white boy. It comes from the universe through as filtered through our parents, the ancient founders of or inheritors of. And the reason I made that distinction is because we get to, to talking about Atlantis before and continuing it down through, trickling down through what we now call Egypt. Okay. So we, when we say ancestors, we're looking way back in time, space, and circumstances to appreciate the work that has been done with this body of knowledge as it continued to move through the atmosphere. When I say atmosphere, ionosphere, stratosphere, hemisphere, okay? So we know what we're talking about when we talk spiritual consciousness. So. in space and circumstances to appreciate the work that has aches are left for us to worry about. We don't have to figure out how to make this work. 
it's been working for estimatedly 100,000 years. Now, Albert Churchwood talked about 40,000 years, and uh, the author of uh, Huggins, the author of Anacalypsis, mentions uh, 100,000 years. You know, if you need any credibility for the value of the sentence, because the European American has completely omitted it in his academic approach to educating Westerners. Consequently, we see the, 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 the slim reflection of scientific development in human beings because the blueprint has not been used of how to grow up and be a human being. <laughs> the West doesn't have that. It's trying to get it through its accredited concept of psychology and the behavior, quote, the behavioral sciences. And we keep seeing stuff missing from human nature that presents these monsters making themselves known in this cycle. You know, deaths that we, we used to read about in comic books are going on in our streets. And stuff that, that my generation never dreamed black folks would do. Black folks are now performing bestialities you know, in, in terms of not just killing, but the kinds of killing. You know, you know that the, the show there's nothing going on in here, the heart, and there's little going on up here. That's all coming from here. You know, l l l the lust of the flesh and the lust after the flush of two concepts that need to be understood. <clears throat> what I want to do is reintroduce in view at least the 12 sons of Zudekias. And I like to use that old term because it's pertinent and relevant to Moorish science. And uh, that's my approach uh, to this. Uh, let me sit it here first, gonna move to the side. I wish this thing would tilt back a little, but we're not fortunate enough to have that kind of a... We'll look at that in a minute. These are the 12 blueprints of human nature, the 12 signs. And let me, let me do this, because I, I want the brothers who weren't here before to have this concept in their consciousness. What word is that you see there? What do you see there? Signature. Now look at it again. What do you see? Okay, all right, okay. Th th that what we're talking about as far as in real intelligence is concerned is nature, mundane and divine. When I say divine, I'm talking about that which is invisible, n not just that which is above us. The divinity is also down here, and it's within yourself. And we need to know that consciously. That, that does not mean you go to church to get divinity. You already have it. Okay. You're already a divine being, but you need to know that. <laughs> know the truth. And not believe it, know it. To know, you must study. You know? and, and the highest order of study is to hear. Okay, uh, you know, uh, th th that's an important key because your higher self, your soul self already knows who you and what you are, but, but we don't pay attention to ourselves. See, we're not conscious. Okay, when you're not paying attention to yourself, you're not self-conscious. You're operating by your glands, which means the 12 signs become more significant in your personal world because you're being operated by, moved by, propelled by the energy of the planetary system in which we live. The less conscious a human being is, the more he's being moved by forces beyond his own consciousness. The more conscious he is, the less, because he becomes more self-guided divinely guided. When I say self, I'm talking higher. So, okay. Okay. The, 
to study this science and not to be able to apply it to your own individual state of affairs, it, it, it makes it a futile effort, useless. What the good is to know about something about everybody else and you don't know how to apply the knowledge you have to yourself? That's a major key of self-knowledge. So the signing of nature is also in reference to the signs of nature, which is what symbology is. Sim, the ancient word for symbology, which comes out of the Kemetic language, which means the drawing of a representation of an image on the ground, is what uh, Yosef ben Yakanan gives for the hieroglyph for Sim. The universe gives it in the heavens, in nature, I'm supposed to have, again, I'm supposed to have my apple here and show you the Macintosh apple. When you cut it open laterally, it shows a perfect five-pointed star. And there are other symbol symbolic representations in nature, in terms of the leaves of nature, trees, and other small uh, life forms. The dates of each sign is given of approximately 30 days, but not necessarily in your month, because the signs move according to dates, not months. So if you're born in the month of Virgo, it does not mean you're necessarily Virgo. You may be Leo, OK? Uh, I guess I'll get to the procession of the equinox. I intended to do that this class. Uh, I'm not going to belabor this. This is on the first tape. So if you want this information elaborated upon, you have to get the, the other tape or the book. The same information is in that book. As I mentioned, this is basic stuff. I'm just kind of reviewing. Which book is that now? Uh, the only astrology book you'll ever need by uh, Marion Wolf Folk, this one here. They only had one copy. I asked Lucimba to get uh, at least six copies, and he didn't do it. I see he's got some other stuff up there. Uh, don't get f in the fervor of buying books, buying books, buying books. You have stuff st stacked up on your damn dresser and, and won't get to read none of it. You know? Buy a book, read a book. <laughs> you know. The, the, these books have energy. They have life in them. You know, and they'll make you buy them. They draw you attention. Then there are times when, when there's a book on a shelf you're supposed to have, and you keep seeing yourself looking at the book, and you walk back, and you keep, you know, the, that's your consciousness and the energy of the book working together for you to take a step forward, okay? So they're relevant. But when you walk into a metaphysical bookstore, be careful of what you're doing. The, the, the books are there composing an energy field. When you walk between the aisles, you get blasted with everybody's stuff, man, you know? You, you can't get out there with that $25 if you went in there with, with 25 You can't get out of there, you know? I used to go down when I first started back in the 60s. I used to go downtown every day, take off my damn job, man, go and wander around this bookstore. And I could not come out of there without a book every day. And one day I looked and went in to get some drawers out of my uh, dresser. No clothes. <laughs> all I had in all of my drawers were books. And I had them all around the, the walls of my bedroom, you know. And had read about four or five of them, you know. But that's compulsive buying. That's the energy doing. It took me years to, to realize that wasn't me. That was the energy. Particularly when the occultists write. You know, they put their attracting energy in it, you know. Because they want to sell this shit. And there are a lot of folks on these shelves, they write to write to make money. They write books to make money. They don't give a damn if you learn anything or not. You know, the, the book might already be written. They'll rewrite it, <laughs> you know, because they got a contract with a publisher to sell some books. You know, so know what you're doing before you go to the bookstore. Know what you want. You want a book. Go in there and buy a book. Look around, you know. You know, and, until you, unless you, you know, your spirit tells you otherwise. But I just want to pre-warn you about that because it's real. Uh, 
If you count here, you'll see more than nine. The, 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 out of this group, there are only nine planets. The sun is not a planet, okay? The sun is a gaseous field of energy, fire, and, and it's not all flame. It is also liquid, okay? Uh, one writer said, if you could see the flames of fire coming from the sun, the, the very sight of it would burn your eyes out, if not your head off. I mean, you know, we're looking at like boiling iron in a pot and somebody throwing it at you. <laughs> and that's the kind of energy you're talking about when you talk about the sun, okay? An enormous sphere of pure energy, pure fire. And we are of that element. The important key in understanding how and why astrology works is because we're of the same energy elements that our solar system is of. We're on the same rhythmic keys that the planets are on. We are vibrating at the varied rates of speed rhythmically that our planets are vibrating at. So our bodies co-respond to those vibrations. I placed up here the law of correspondence because this is the underlying principle of action-reaction in understanding, again, how the law of correspondence, as above, so below. What is going on in our solar system, though, though the solar system is not above us, we're in the solar system, we view it from this vantage point, but it is still a principle that is constant. Universal law is what we know as truth because that does not change. Religions change. Beliefs change. Mundane sciences change because they're not fixed in universal law. If you want to know the difference between law, truth, and belief. Okay, well, why this person can say, I believe this and be right, and that person can say, I believe that and be right, and they both are contradicting each other. Because belief is something one has a human prerogative to entertain. People will tell you, well, I, I don't, I ask the sister, what's your birth sign? I, I don't believe in astrology. And, well, that doesn't make the sun stop shining and the planets stop turning, honey. If you don't believe it, don't do nothing to the universe. The universe does not exist because we believe it. Okay. And, and that's, again, the difference between religion and spirituality, between knowledge and faith. You know, knowing the truth is what sets us free from fear, from ignorance, and it, the, the more refined we become in our knowledge and practice, free from mistakes, okay? Which is something seems to take a damn lifetime to get free of. I gave a little uh, logo concept of key word for each planet. Uh, the sun as the source of life, I think everybody will agree with that in terms of being able to feel this tremendous energy. Uh, particularly during the spring summer periods. Uh, I mentioned before that I was sitting on a wall. It's the first time I had this experience. I mean, I certainly had felt the sun before, but at the angle I was sitting and the angle of where the sun was sh shining, this, this ray of sun literally burned my thigh. I had to get up, I had to jump out the way like somebody threw fire on me. It was just that ray, you know? That's 94 point something million miles away. That's how powerful the energy feel that we live in is. And some of it is so fine, we don't even feel it. <laughs> you know, and we don't feel Jupiter, Mars. Yes, we do feel Mars. Every time you get angry, particularly for no damn reason, that's Marian energy. But it's not angry energy. It's how one responds to the energy. As the source of life, the sun is, an, is one of the uh, 
untampered with glyphs that comes out of the Kemetic symbology system. The, 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 the circle in this science and in the metaphysical sciences always represents a universality. Therefore, it represents spirit. When you see a half a circle, that's a soul. This dot in glyphic is always given as black because the origin of all matter is black. All color comes out of the energy, the substance of black the vibrating force that produces the other nine rays of energy is black. Zero is the glyph that represents black. Red is the vibration of number one. This is the promoter of birth and the first view of that of course is during the spring uh, equinox when the food we eat, the air we breathe from the transmutation of energy from leaves uh, begins to reappear. The, the grand cycle happens again. As lightly as we take it, it's very important. If we were to wake up one spring and didn't see any leaves and didn't see any food, we, we know our butts are in trouble. <laughs> okay, that's how important the energy, which is considered masculine and is because it projects out and stimulates the earth, which is considered mother, matter, to produce, give birth. Those are the two essential principles of all life, male and female, father and mother. And in studying the universality of things, we study should study the universality of mind as mother-father, male and female principle of mind. Everything has gender. That's why the Kibalion is so important a book uh, to have because it explains those seven universal laws that are not going to change, that you keep using because that's the way mind works. That's the way nature is. And to understand the functioning of nature and the nature of mind is to understand the nature of things and the nature, most importantly, of self and other human beings. You know, we will be less uh, affected by the, the concept of homophobia if we realize we're all male and female in principle. Okay? And if we understand chemistry, we know that chemistry operates sexuality. If you've got too much female hormone in your brain, you're going to behave with a feminine personality. If you've got too much male hormone in your brain, even if it's a female, she's going to behave with a masculine personality. That's nature. At its lowest level of expression, of course, on the sexual level, <clears throat> The, the divine beings of, of such an ancient period of time who were uh, androgynous were of male and female nature. That was their matured nature. The divine beings that express during this cycle who are of the grand master level have both a male and a female personality. Th th that, that's nature, okay? It has nothing to do with gay, hetero, you know, that's, when you start talking that, you're talking here. When you start talking about love and wisdom, you're talking up here. Love and wisdom, male and female principle. Okay. The moon and the sun are probably the two most important planets in terms of looking at a chart and understanding one's personality. Wherever you find the sun in a charting of the 30 degrees will determine your sun sign. Again, the sun makes up the personality, character, physiology traits. Uh, if you, when you see a, uh, we're going to get at this in a minute, see a brother with these kind of eyebrows, usually very thick and bushy, that's Aries. 
you know, you, you don't have to, you don't have to even have to ask him. You know, that, that's areas. You know, they, not all areas get that shape, but it, it's very much pronounced uh, in the Aries 30 degree personality. It's one sign where you can see the planetary energy making up this appearance, therefore personality, therefore character, therefore thinking. Okay. I'll get back to Aries because that's the sign we're going to. We're going to look at each sign, each of the 12 classes so that you have some information on each of the 30 degree signs. Most of us, we go look at a astrology book, first thing we do is turn to our sign. And that's, that's important to do. That shows that you're interested in yourself. And, and then we close the damn book and put it away. Or if we check out a girlfriend's sign or the sister we just call, you know, that's the, 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 the greatest benefit most of us get out of uh, astrology books and magazines. So that doesn't make you a student. Uh, the moon affects our emotional nature. It affects an area that's very important for black males particularly to understand during this period. It affects the unconscious level of our psyches, of the subconscious, where the dark levels and layers of thought rest dormant. That's what this planet activates in the danger field. It also activates, of course, dreams, our passions. And when you say passions, you don't just mean romance. You also mean anger and aggression. You also mean fear, hatred. The, the, the moon activates those. One of the big indicators of that is the fact that during the full moon cycle, which only lasts two and a half days, if you're living in the inner city, you, you hear the result of the moon. The, the sirens go off like door buzzers. The police is chasing somebody every five minutes. That's the kind of energy response we tend to get in our world. Moodiness, uncalled for anger and despondency is also another problem. That doesn't mean the moon is negative. That means the person who responds that way is on that kind of emotional slant and all something doing, the energy of the moon is doing this punching the buttons. So if you keep your spiritual consciousness, emotional level up, then you get a benevolent feeling from the moon. You, you get a harmonious feeling from the moon. You get a smoother feeling from the moon. W women during the, their cycle get ate up by the moon w with their PMS stuff, you know? And, and what the yogis are saying is that because their their blood is charged with too much uh, physical flush, big meat eaters. When women who become vegetarians clear most of the fatty substances out of their blood, they only spot a little bit for a day or two, and it's over. You know, the average American, particularly female. He, he, he eats probably a cow a week, you know, with the hamburgers, and the Burger Kings, and the McDonald's, man, you know. You know, of course, half that stuff is something else. We're, we're eating too much meat, and we're not in the er era of lusting after the flush. <laughs> okay, that, that isn't where we are. But we've learned how to eat meat. You know, for most folks feel like they're starving to death thing and got a big old ham hock on, on the stove or on the plate, they feel like they ain't had no dinner, you know? That, that's training. It's been handed forward, handed forward, handed forward. Okay, I, I didn't intend to dwell on it too much, but sustainer of life, the maintenance of things is maintained by your emotional pool. If your emotions are erratic, 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 you're gonna find yourself moving, 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 moving. Getting a job, quitting a job. Moving here, moving out. Getting a sister, quitting a sister, <laughs> okay? If your emotions, are like that, that's what you're going to be doing. If you wonder why. That, that doesn't mean you're consciously doing it. You're being stimulated by the energy that causes moving, motion, activi activity, activated. You know, if you don't have plans 
perspectives in your consciousness, in your subconsciousness, then you're going to be batted around like a hockey puck. You know, and, and we see it every day. We see brothers sitting around on the steps and laying on the ground, you know. You know when, when, when they get enough sleep, then they wake up and they walk from there to the next place and sit down, you know. Th th those are pawns. You know, th th those are not even conscious human beings, you know. When you wake up, up here, your inner voice tells you, go over to see so-and-so and tell him what you need. I mean, it can begin there. Man, brother, I need a job. Oh, man, that's a dude just called me about a job. You know, poverty's over for that brother who just for a second took his own inner advice. And his world changes from one hour to the next, you see? That's consciousness, that's self-awareness, okay? And, and it's important to, to, to know so you don't feel like God and the universe and everybody's against you when you go in one of them dips, because you're going into some dips, because that's the roller coaster ride we're all on. Ain't nobody going straight up, okay? We're on a roller coaster. And you've got to have something to go down with so you want to come back up. You know, everybody gets challenged, okay? The universe requires that you pay taxes for having that body, okay? And you're going to pay them. You know, no matter how intelligent you think you are, <laughs> how good you think you are, you're going to pay some taxes, some dues down here, because that's where you are, okay? We're between the law of duality. Mercury. The communicator, this is the energy of conversation, the in energy of thinking, the energy of relating to others. It's not just thinking, it's thinking and relating that information to someone else. This energy conveys itself to you through you. Okay, that's why it's given the concept of the messenger. Remember Mercury is the one with the steel helmet on and the wings on his feet, that's, that's Greek. Grecian, but it's, it's the only one we know until we find out that they're talking about a black man <laughs> okay, who was called Tehute uh, in the ancient Kemetic language, Hermes in the Greek, as you'll find in the, the Kabbalion, that, that, that's Mercury, the, the messenger of the gods. Okay, but we're talking about the energy, okay, and the planet that filters the energy through. The, the planet Mercury does not make energy. It simply filters through a certain kind of energy, okay? Like your kidneys makes a certain kind of chemistry different from your bladder, different from your pancreas, okay? These are, we're gonna talk about the glands later on, how they correspond with planets and how these planets affect our glandular system because most of the human beings you shall meet during the course of your day are glandular human beings. They're not functioning up here only and up here. They're functioning from the glandular planetary system in their physical bodies or in their physical universes. We are the replica of the universe. Head Aries bent over backwards, touching the feet Pisces is a full circle of the 12 signs of the zodiac, is the product of the mother, Zodiacus, zodiac. In uh, terms of uh, communicative devices is also under the influence of, now the other big key is we're talking influence. Planets don't make you do something, they affect influence that's all they do when you you read in the book this planet rules this sign it does not mean that that planet is going to make you do this make you it has shaped you in a certain way gives you a certain pro what's what is that stuff people next door oh okay breaking up that meat you have to be eating over there. oh okay <laughs> gives you the propensity the inclination tendency or the proclivity the negative drive, which is a propensity to do something, to urge to do something. Depending on your self-control and self-mastery will determine if you do what is right 
or do what is wrong. Okay. And, and the, the big key to that is that we are responsible for our actions. Even though I'm getting ready to explain something that will, will, will seem con contrary to that, we're still responsible for our actions. Example, if O.J. Simpson killed that woman, the universe will hold him his real trial. If he didn't, the universe also let him go, it, no matter what people think, okay? You don't get away with anything negative down here because of the laws that govern this realm of where we are in the subconscious realm of the mind of God is where we live, move, and have our being. So correct thinking produces correct behavior and correct results. If you think poverty, you can bet you're going to be poor. If you think prosperity, you can bet you're going to prosper. That's how the mind works. You can't mumble and grumble and have a pity party about not being able to pay the bills, buy this and buy that, and expect somebody out of the heavens to come and bless you with a blessing. It don't happen like that. It happens according to your thinking, okay? If you don't learn anything else in this class, at least realize that your mind made up is the results you see on your outside world. Whatever your mind is made up of is the results you have in your world. Okay? All right. Come on, sit down, if, unless you're all going to buy something. Uh, Mercury is in the third house, which is the house of short journeys, letter writing, creative writing, brothers and sisters, uh, conversationalists. And don't play that slight because conversationalists being a good conversationalist can make you rich. Did anybody know a rich conversationalist who's black who makes their money just by talking? Oprah Winfrey, that's all she does. She doesn't sing or dance or act. That came later. Oprah Winfrey talks. That's all she does. That's communication. That's Mercury's energy. That's the third house. And, and the sister got the big buck. They got to hand it to her with the dump truck. She got so damn much money. So don't, don't underplay conversation. Let me relate the story of Averroes uh, in the Spanish, in the Arabic, his name is Ibn Muhammad, Ibn Muhammad al-Rashid al-Rashad, the master of polite conversation, a black man who was in Spain in the eighth century A.D. Uh, that you can reread in uh, the Golden Age of the Moors. I don't see it on the wall here. That's another one. Don't stay in here too long. Uh, this is the Eurocentric or European father of spiritual knowledge in Europe. Okay, they, every, most of the, the New Age thinkers lend that to uh, Moriail and Germain. It was Averroes who taught them, who taught astrology, numerology, the metaphysical sciences, who told and explained to Europeans to change their clothes three times a day to keep germs off and to wash their hands before eating. They had to be taught and explained that little moray. <laughs> a word we don't use too much when we talk about etiquette and behavior is the word mores. That's a derivative of your ethnocentric name, Moors. That's where all the manners of Europe came from, from the Moors. So the very idea of good manners is a synonym of your very ethnocentric name. Uh, okay, I don't want to get too far from explaining this here. Mars, the projector. The energy, the red energy, roaring red energy. We're going to get into this in a minute here. Let me talk about Aries. Red roaring energy. The, the first dynamic of the idea of Christ is not a white light, but a red vibration. That, that, that's the first projection 
from the modicum of night, the black dot, or the primal substance of the universe. Out of the darkness cometh... All right. Well, it's not a white light first, it's a red light. Then that light continues to vibrate and it turns orange. And it continues to vibrate and it turns yellow, green, dark blue, royal blue, sky blue, purple, then pink, then white. That's the rainbow vibrational scale of energy coming out of the primal substance, the darkness, the blackness, mater, matter, mother. That, that's the order of things, the order of vibration. When you study astrology, when you talk about behavior, when you talk about talents and abilities, you're talking about the distribution of energy, not a planet, okay? We don't feel the planet. We feel the energy coming through the planets. That energy is in this room right now, okay? Even though we can't see the planets or feel the planets, the energy is here. It pervades our system, our solar system, and our physical system, which is also a solar system, okay? Again, as above, so below. If there's order in the heavens, there's order on the earth. If there's order inside the heavens, there's order inside the earth. The body is the earth. When you pick up the Bible and read about the earth, you're talking about the physical body. Okay. So the science of the universe is about you and where you're going. You see, the, the 50s and the 60s produced brothers talking about, we don't have a, a plan. We got to make a plan if we're going to get out of this. Those are the revolutionaries. You know, so being intellectuals, they grabbed Marx, Lenin, and Trotsky and tried to hand that to black folks. And black folks were going to bed at night trembling and scared, trying to find God in their feeble prayers. But because those brothers did not have a cultural insight to their own history. They had a mundane perspective, a political perspective about Africa as the victim, not as the creator of civilization. See, that, that's the difference between the winner and the loser. The loser believes he's a victim. The winner believes he's always a winner. <laughs> it has always been a winner. I always had it. I can always do it. Th that's your true perspective. That's where your history backtracks you to from a point of success and failure, success and failure, success and failure, success to six. And yeah. history doesn't, nothing goes straight up. Everything is a roller coaster. Okay. Skip Venus. Uh, skip Venus? Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay. Very good. That's interesting, too, because I've done the same thing with Libra, which is one of the signs it governs. The beauty of life, Venus. Very good, thank you. Uh, a very important energy uh, for black folks because this particular energy is pertinent to the black woman who has had the hardest time in the Western Hemisphere dealing with her appearance. And she, the female on planet Earth, is not only the seeker of, but also the custodian of beauty. The one thing black women have sought down through the eons, not ages, is beauty. Pursued it like a hunter pursuing a lion. In the period that your ancestors were in Europe, now called Spain, once called Iberia, the standard of beauty in Europe was dark skin, broad nose, thick lips, and big butts. And the European woman followed that example as best she could. We're not talking about hundreds of thousands or thousands and thousands of years ago. We're talking about five, six hundred years ago. You were the standard of beauty in Europe. And the European woman put on a 
bone, whale bone girt behind her narrow butt so she'd have some butt to wiggle when she walked into the party. She would put on black face over her pale skin to have some color to go to a party of the royal house in Europe. You see? She would braid her hair so she would have hair style and fashion. But those were the standards in the Western Hemisphere for beauty. We're talking about the effect of this energy here. The energy that shapes the fine face. Now when I say fine face, don't let your head go to thin noses and flat lips. Okay? Because that's the way our psyches have been, been set. You know, with blonde hair, blue eyes, and I mean, it's still happening. We look around, we see black women walking up the street with blonde hair. You know, and Whoopi went and got her some damn glass blue eyes. Of course, Whoopi was playing. You know, she, she knew how to get some money. So she went on and got it the way she knew how to get it. She had, almost looked like she was white, even though she was black. And they, they liked that in Hollywood. I, any illusions of mine becomes profitable in that kind of world. But it, it's left a very bitter taste, stainful taste in our mouths towards her, I might add. And she knew, she knows that, she, she knows that. But she knew what she was doing. She wanted to get rich, so she's rich. Anyway, Venus is the planet of physical beauty as a effect. The reality of Venus is it announces there is a spirit, an energy of beauty that is a power. Nefertiti's is one of the examples left out in the view where we can see that this woman being who became a goddess had the spirit of beauty. The beautiful one has come is the definition of Nefertiti a seductive spirit, an overwhelming spirit that quelms all pain, suffering, sickness, anger, seduces, reduces the aggressions of. We don't know really what it does. It is a mystery among the mysteries. The more you hear about the spirit of beauty is not in the Bible, but in the Quran. It's only mentioned a couple of times in the Bible. Jesus never mentioned the spirit of beauty. It is a feminine energy. It is a part of the behind closed doors, private knowledge keep out energy that comes later in your spiritual maturity. No one can harm a being who has the spirit of beauty they have nothing to harm it with. <laughs> if women are in pursuit of protection, it would be that particular energy. It is a burgundy vibration. One of the reasons why the Masons and the Moors wear the burgundy fez. It represents as a vibration the spirit of beauty. It brings harmony, compatibility, a lovable presence, something all human beings need that prevents mothers from killing their children, hurting their children, neglecting their children, being angry at their children if the child has a spirit of beauty. The mother can't put it down. Can't get the cooking done because you got to go hug this pretty little baby. I was on the bus one day, and most of the folks got on there looking all sad, all down to the shoes and so forth. This woman, young woman, got on the bus with her little baby. And everybody thereafter who passed by this baby had to smile. This baby was beaming. <laughs> A little black, little black girl just filled up with it. And everybody who looked in that direction had to smile. She had it. Yeah. So it's real given as a gift. Some children, souls, come back with certain spiritual 
abilities, certain spiritual attributes. They're just born with it. They don't have to do anything to get it. But they have to know that they have it at some point because it becomes conscious, then it subseeds, goes into the subconscious. Okay. You acquire a spirit by acknowledging it. If you want the Holy Spirit, acknowledge the Holy Spirit. If you want the spirit of light, acknowledge the spirit of light. If you want the spirit of wisdom, acknowledge the spirit of wisdom. You have the ingrained in your cells of all of the energy in this universe. You already have it, but it has to be opened to come out. Educare, educo, draw out. Mars, the projector. We talked about the aggressive vibration of this planet that activates all of the other aspects where it's found. This is the planet that puts things into motion. It is the activator. Sends out this stimulating, aggressive and progressive, doing energy. There's nothing dormant about the energy of Mars. If the personality that's receiving it is not tuned in to successful doing, it's going to do wrong. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we have an attitude about the thugs and the thieves and the criminals in our world. They are as much victims as those whom they harm because they have no control of what they're doing. But they're responsible for every damn thing they do, and including those that side with the dark side. They still have to pay the price for going in that direction. And we'll get back to Mars because the, the, the rest of the class will be on Aries. <clears throat> Jupiter, the greater beneficiary, the largest planet in our solar system. Not the largest sphere, the largest planet. Remember, the sun is not a planet. This particular energy is what gives us the good vibes, prosperity, good friends, success, pleasant days, pleasant weeks opportunities, blessings, blessings, good luck, great luck, good fortune. That's Jupiter, the energy of Jupiter, the benevolent. More money in your pocket, more security. That is all the energy of Jupiter. Wherever you find Jupiter in your chart, in relationship to both the sign and the house, will tell you the kind of good fortune you are more likely to receive Remember, nothing guarantees you anything down here because you have the, the free will to say you don't want it or you ain't going to get up out of the bed and go or you ain't going to come back to the appointment that you made with so-and-so. You have that free will. See? But the universe has already prepared something of a success for each one of us. It's how we are moving through our, quote, path of life, destiny, that would determine our success. If we hold up too here, too long there, messing with a bad habit, sulking, staying angry, staying bitter, or being stupid, when we're supposed to be there where the good stuff is happening, will determine as to whether we win or lose that day, that week, that month, that year. And if we're so out of tune, it will even determine as to whether we will have any success in that lifetime as we see many of our folks are not having much success at all, but having, quote, bad lessons to learn. Wisdom, Jupiter. Wisdom is above reasoning and knowledge because in wisdom comes the question, the answer, the why, and the how. That's wisdom. We can reason certain things out. We can think certain things out. We can even draw conclusions. Wisdom will explain it, provide the directive, show you how to get there, and make sure things happen for you when you get there to get it done. That's wisdom. Okay. That, that's what a man needs. That comes at the fruition of M-A-N, master 
able and noble. Very important that we seek wisdom. Doubly important that our women seek wisdom while their hearts are at the mercy of fools because women respond are responding to the emotions of love lacking the power of love and that has made their lives a walk of danger when you hear a woman said well you say he beat you every other day yes well are you going back to him yes well why I, I love him that's not wise <laughs> okay and know that that is not love taking her back to him. That's what she feels. Wisdom and love would carry her around that fool, <laughs> out of danger. You see? We are not succeeding on the social level of our lives because of our attitude and behavioral patterns toward our women. That's my theory. I don't think it's mine alone, but that, that, uh, I support that idea. How we are mistreating the symbol of divine love on planet Earth is the kind of karma we are getting. See? There are too many of us in jail for something we didn't do. How many times have you heard a brother say that? Okay. And, and that's why he's there for something he didn't do and was supposed to do <laughs> and didn't do it. Didn't treat his woman right. Didn't keep his promise. Didn't maintain his obligations to her. Didn't have the right attitude towards her and the children. Things he was supposed to do and didn't do. Okay? Important perspectives for being guided aright. When you do negative stuff, you get misguided. Not by the devil, but by your own spirit. See? If there's anyone down here, you must obey. It is your higher self. Because your higher self will kick your behind quicker than Jack, Jack Johnson and Joe Lewis particularly if it's time for you to go somewhere, particularly if it's time for you to grow up and you want to go down, <laughs> your higher self will stop you in, in, in your tracks, strip you clean. Yeah. Oh, very important. Saturn represents the grim reaper, and most of the time that's interpreted as a karma, bad karma, cause and effect. Uh, relationship but it draws the guidelines of safety is what it does it has the intelligent energy to slow you down when you're moving too fast remember uh, the first time I noted a, a brother who had a really lucky night then the Gotham Hotel in Detroit the brother had won pocket full of money and the brother came out of the uh, the uh, the gambling room into the hotel hall like this. <laughs> you know, and it scared somebody gonna take it from him. And got downstairs. And damn if somebody didn't take it from him. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Sometimes you get something and you're not supposed to have it. And something takes it from you. Because if you had it, you might jump in the car to go somewhere and kill your damn self. <laughs> You know, we don't know. All knowledge is about balance. Not Zoom. <laughs> you take off and everything's wonderful, you know, and, and no brakes on the car. We keep reading about accidents. We keep reading about, and the strangest group of accidents occurred a couple of months ago. Every time you turned the damn TV on, some yellow bus with school kids in it was running into something or somebody running into the school bus. What the hell was that all about, <laughs> you know? Was it the children? Was it the driver? 
Th this is what this science can explain, those kinds of mundane events before they happen. See? Much so-called accident, which is not an accident, it's cause-effect relationship, can be avoided if you will hear what the Spirit says unto your churches, what your spirit says to your mind, your center, whatever. You might hear it from here. You might hear it from your heart center. You might hear it from your solar plexus. But, but can you hear it? D d don't go there. You know, that's all you get. That don't mean jump in the car and go there anyway. It, 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 you can read all this stuff you want. If you're not going to listen, you can't get there safely. Yeah. Victory from your vantage point is to listen to what your spirit has to say about everything. One brother said, I don't even get up out of the bed unless my spirit tells me to. Well, some morning your spirit is not going to tell you to get up. Yeah. You, you got to have a pre-laid plan Monday night to be motivated to get up and do something Tuesday. Yeah. But, but listen to what your spirit says. Okay. Limitations are guidelines so that you can develop the time factor. How come it's taking so long? Is the developmental stages of strength, character, perseverance, some keep at it attitude until you get it done. That this energy here sparks. Man, I'll do this, blah, 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 blah. Ah, uh, shit, fucking, you know, like, like, like a match. It flashes on, 